am checking in today with Teresa James. How are you doing today? Hi, good. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so I think the first thing we want to talk about is the show that you have upcoming. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I show with Hoffheimer Gallery in Chicago. And I have an opening this Saturday uh, from one to five. And I'm showing also with artist Eleanor C. Sparris. Um, so if anybody wants to come by, they're having safe openings, mask wearing and limited people in the gallery at a time. Um, and I'm very excited about the show because it's the most recent work that I'm still continuing with right now. Okay, great. And that is Saturday, um, October, November 7th, 2020. So for whenever people are seeing this, just so they know, that's right. when it is. Um, Hofheimer <laughs> Gallery is in Chicago. It is on Damon Ave and it is in the Ravenswood neighborhood. Yes, Lawrence, I think, is the cross street that's real close by. So let's talk about the work. So which one would you like to talk about first? Um, well, we're going to start with etchings. I'm a printmaker, so let's start with holy ones. I have been making prints for about 30 years or so, and etching is pretty much what I was focused on for many years, multiple color etching. And this print in particular uh, shows uh, multiple plates used, and it also has like some hand dusting with metallic powders, shinkole. So in my work, I really like to layer techniques and add in little tidbits that are a nice little surprise. Um, this particular piece is from a series called The Fellowship of Grace and Glory. And when Printworks Gallery was around at the time, forget what year that was, but this was the show that was up um, featuring all these new etchings. And then I started adding in photogravure to my work because I'm really interested in photography and just when I look out at the space in the world and when I think about my work, I was trying to think of how could I bring together my drawing and photo images. So that's when I started adding in photogravure and trying to uh, mesh the two together to make kind of like a seamless image. This particular image doesn't have any photogravure in it, but this is where I kind of started. And so this hand with wings um, is a reoccurring character, if you will, in my work. Um, the armor kind of represents like warrior protection and the wings help it be mobile and kind of also represents like an angelic figure or a soul in the afterlife. So hands with wings is something that just kind of has always reoccurred in my work for many, many years. Um, so then the next image, uh, Messenger, was from this same show. Uh, this will give you an example of how I incorporated photography with my drawing. And again, it's a hand with wings. This time it doesn't have the armor on it, but this is a three color etching. So there were three separate plates made and it has the chincole and the hand dusting um, with metallic powders. Uh, the hand again represents like a soul or an angelic figure without having to draw like a whole body and to get my story across in a version where I'm only drawing like maybe a piece. I, I think I was really inspired by details of when they show details of paintings in books. And I love that little intimacy and getting up close. So the imagery itself is what do also- you, What do you mean? Like, you mean in a book, like they show like a blow up? Yeah, like I, my dad always had all these books on paintings and you'd see the painting and then they'd have a little square where they blew up a tiny section of the painting. Yeah. And I thought there was so many really interesting things in that blow up that you really couldn't see when you're looking at the overall piece. Yeah. So one of my etchings kind of became like these little details of bigger pictures of my larger work. Yeah, and that's something I am going to comment on the show, your upcoming show because I was looking at the work um, at the gallery last week, and there is um, a lot of detail when you get up close. And your work, as well as Eleanor, who you're showing with, you both have a situation where it's kind of if you're looking at it from far away, 
you have one experience, but as you get close and get very close, there's all sorts of lovely details um, that really reveal themselves only when you get closer to the work. Oh, well, thanks for noticing that. Yeah, I, I when I do my work, I do step back and I like it to draw people in from afar, but also then when they get up close, discovering yeah. all these little tiny nuances and things. Um, and the, the uh, imagery kind of comes from uh, my spiritual life, my Catholic faith, and that seems to be a theme that I keep exploring. I kind of call it the unseen world. So when you see these next images that are going to be coming up, um, it is my interpretation of an unseen world coexisting with our world, our metaphysical world that we live in, and how they intertwine, uh, play off each other, and how I envisioned that would be, like I guess when I'm looking at things in, outside in the world and nature, and I just imagine these uh, spirits, angels, souls, or and my hands with wings, like, being incorporated in this world, even though we can't see it ourselves here at this time and stage of life. Uh, and you will also see in maybe not all these images, but I do tend to, I use a lot of animals in my work, mm -hmm. birds right now, uh, dogs and children. And I, that's kind of because of their innocence mm -hmm. that I like to add that in. They're kind of like the closest thing to angels on earth to me. And so you might see them as winged figures or as spirits or interacting, animals interacting with angelic figures, apparitions. So this series, I also tend to work in all these different mediums. Sometimes for many years, I work on a series and then I might switch to something else. It kind of eases into the next thing. So I might take a few months to work on a piece or I might take years to finish or work on a piece. So these cyanotype prints are large. They're about 50 by 60 some inches. And cyanotypes are blue. Um, you can also Google cyanotype later to figure out more information for anybody listening. But to give you a, a basic interpretation of this piece, Stella, it's a dog that my friend had and the hands with wings are drawn in with pencil, colored pencil. So in the cyanotype process, I take you know the photo and then I go into Photoshop and I would cut away all the background from the dog and I would make my negative and then I can from there print my cyanotype image. So the negative is giant, it's about 50 by 60 inches, however big the piece is. And then once I print it and develop it in water, just like a photograph, it dries. And then as you see the hands in the picture, those are drawn in later with the blue colored pencil that I picked specifically to match. Um, and to integrate with the dog, I also drew back into the photo part of the dog. So this is kind of like animals having that sixth sense, like they can see things. Yeah. that maybe we can't see, and a way to explore, again, uh, combining all these like interesting mediums and techniques, again, with the photo and the drawing and kind of making it like seamless. Mm -hmm. And the negative space is super important to me too. I'm very much, you know, aware of my negative space as well as the positive space. And so the cyanotype series tends to be a lot of pieces with these all this white background and it also makes it more otherworldly and gives you that kind of spiritual sense and the color blue I think too just kind of gives that feel too. I love artwork that has a lot of white space or you know, pla places where the canvas isn't filled. I like when, you know, painters in particular, when they're there, I feel like that's a courageous move to leave yeah. like a big section of the canvas, like open to, for basically the user or the yeah. observer to kind of fill in. Right, it is, it's uh, it's kind of gutsy, you know, especially in painting and like, oh, I don't, I don't paint. So I'd be like, ah, but, um, yeah, it is interesting. I think that goes back to like my design classes that I took so many years ago and really, you know, paying attention to that part. Yeah.
I was going to say also the scale, um, you know, some things I do are small, some things I do are very large, um, like in the next piece, or I don't want to like uh, get too ahead, but um, I what did prowl the, what prowls? No, actually, it would be illumination. Oh, okay. Sorry. Right. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so this is another cyanotype. And it's again about, you know, 50 some inches by 60 inches. And it was this elk that I took a photo of, I actually researched, where am I gonna find some elk? And so I found an elk farm in Southern Illinois, the Krause Elk Farm. And I called them and they set up a time and I went down there and just took my daughter and my husband and we got special access to all these elk. And I was in there just photographing them. It was so beautiful, the experience, because I want my photographs to be very personal too like i was there and i i knew like these people or the dog and so that all adds into it yeah. so this elk it's called illumination and it's taken from like a way of how angelic figures communicate between each other so they don't use language like we do here and um, they can talk with one another by near willing it to be and that has sometimes been known to be called illumination. And so this with the elk, so peaceful, this animal and this bright light behind it and all the little like white dots kind of like representing space. Uh, I wanted these pieces to be large as possible, but when you have to expose something, your, um, your UV exposure unit has to also be large. So. I could only get so big, uh, but I wanted them to. What do you mean really... your U? What do you mean your UV expo? expo oh, what do you... oh yeah. So when I'm doing a cyanotype, I have to expose the negative onto the paper. The paper has to be coated with cyanotype solution. Um, so these chemicals that I mix up, I coat the paper. It has to uh, dry overnight in the dark room, and then um, I put the paper on this like flat bed with the negative on top. And then it has to be in my UV exposure unit. So it has these UV light bulbs that shine down and um, exposes the image into the paper. And then I um, run it in the sink in the water and it washes out kind of like a photograph. Sorry. So are you taking the original photograph with film? No, it is a digital photograph, but then I go into Photoshop and I can um, cut away things that I don't right. want in a photo, all the background usually. But then from there, I um, scan it into, I have to throw like a curve and all this other technical blah stuff that I don't quite fully understand, but somehow I muffled my way through it. But so it has to be then printed on substrate. So the negative is also like 50 by 60 some inches. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the um, what prowls? Sure. Now, are yeah, these so this, uh, are, are these in the show, the upcoming show? They are. They will be at the Hoffheimer Gallery show. Uh, these are the latest pieces I'm working on, and these are not prints. They are one of a kind pieces on vintage book covers, and they're mostly birds with my little hands with wings per perched on branches next to them. This one in particular though shows, you know, I, I told, you know, beautiful side and now it's time to remind people there is that dark side, the evil forces at work. And so you'll see the little skeleton hands show up here and there. And those are kind of like my bad guys uh, because in the work I do like to have it that little bit of edge to it as well and not everything be so sweet and um, happy and you know because it's like this battle that is between the good and evil that's coexisting and happening all around us so that's kind of my theme that I'm still exploring even in these collages so um, it's just a new way of interpreting this idea uh, so the book covers Sometimes I use the same paper that they came with. Um, sometimes if the paper is so damaged or it just doesn't look right, I'll recover it on the inside. So I'm using the inside of the book cover, 
uh, then the birds themselves are actually cut out from old engravings. I was, um, I've been, you know, visiting antique stores. This was like two years ago I started making these. So um, I'd run into these antique stores and find all these really cool bird engravings. And they're, these people are cutting them out of these books and just selling them on the side. So uh, I'm looking at them thinking, oh my gosh, I see like my hands in there in this, in this world with these birds and wings. And I, from past work too, I, I used to have a couple of birds and they really influenced my work. Um, so these images, especially this one here with the, the skeleton hands, it just is a reminder of like, be vigilant, kind of keep an eye out for these little dark creatures or these evil forces that are around us. And I'm incorporating them with these birds and the good hands as well, kind of in there. And it, once in a while, not every time, but if you look on the spine of the book, I don't always include the spine. If it's an interesting spine, then I love to put it in there and show it. Uh, this one is the Phantom Rickshaw, I think. Yes. And so that kind of gave me an idea like, oh, this is going to be like a darker, edgier piece. Uh, but sometimes the book can inspire like what the imagery is going to be. Or sometimes I just flat out leave the spine and cover hidden and just create like a space with so the like the vines and all that are collaged on and painted and uh, pen and ink is added was cut out and the branch kind of ended I had to kind of keep it going so then I kind of recreate it on paper and then start collaging all the vines on and the leaves okay great yeah, and then let's see, we have, uh, oh, Outside of Time, I think is the next mm -hmm. one, the yep. orange, yes. So this one was fun because this book just happened to have these this beautiful orange paper. And I had some birds cut out already that I was moving around trying to think about how they were gonna be positioned. And uh, I just thought, oh, you know, why not try this? I mean, it's not like a typical background. I don't see it as a sky or as a unseen world kind of background, but it kind of had uh, an Asian feel to it when I started laying these birds in with these blacks and whites and oranges. And I just, I loved it. And I thought, I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to make now my hands with this white colored pencil and maybe still try to portray that unseen world and how they're still interacting with these birds, but they're still in their own separate world as well. Yeah. So this was like another way of interpreting it where, you know, you, you can, you do ideas, but you want them to kind of change a little bit. And even though you, it stays the same and it's similar imagery, you're still as an artist, hopefully, trying some new techniques and things to grow and so that everything doesn't look exactly the same and yep. um, but also not forced mm -hmm. um, so this one was kind of fun in that way uh, because sometimes my my work i guess tends to be monochromatic for the most part so i'm like we need to get a little bit of color in here <laughs> so uh yeah that orange is really um it is orange. It looks great. Yeah. And against the, the brown of the birds. That's fantastic. Thank you. And then the last piece, Go Higher. So this, again, is that same book theme. Uh, the Eyes of the World was the title of this book. And I just thought, oh, that's such a cool title. And I'm not going to, I'm going to use that. Like, how do I feel about that? So I found this really neat bird that I wanted to do. You know, I cut out the birds and then sometimes the cutout part, you'll just have the silhouette left. And I'm like, oh, that's cool too. Like, I don't want to waste that paper. So I think I see something here. So a lot of times in other works, I'll take that cutout silhouette of the bird and make a whole separate piece with it. But in this case, I wanted to kind of mimic that unseen world theme again, but only by like making it almost like a diptych of the, the reverse of both and mirroring each other. 
So the bird on one side and then the cutout of that bird on the opposite side. And then the leaves are green on the opposite side. It's like everything kind of flip flops back yep. and forth. And then when you look inside the cutout of the bird, I found this really cool illustration in an old children's book of these kids in this hot air balloon. And so then when I, I got the silhouette cut out, I'm like placing it on top of this engraving or this illustration thinking, oh, how this could be really cool. Go higher eyes of the world. So it all kind of comes together where it's like your standard, you don't want your standard to be the world standard, like go higher. And then with the hot air balloon and the bird and flight, and I guess you could just <laughs> have a field day thinking of all the symbolism in this particular piece. Absolutely. But um, yeah, so it's it's been fun doing these. I am just really enjoying it. And especially in the beginning, you know, when you get an idea and the, the first parts of the piece are exciting and then there then there's that little bit of drudgery where you're like well you gotta do the work now and finish and fill it and <laughs> but I am really excited about this uh, body of work and I'm, I'm continuing to make more of these well great um yeah these are fantastic anything else you want to say to everyone before we can t uh anything else you want to say to people about the work uh I just hope that they enjoy it and that it brings them like a positive feeling. My titles are really important to me and sometimes I come up with the titles before the piece. So I just, I hope they bring people joy and positivity and to appreciate themselves and other people around them. Okay, great. So again, the show is uh, opening this Saturday at Hofheimer Gallery. This Saturday is November 7th, 2020, yeah. and Hofheimer Gallery in the Ravenswood um, neighborhood of Chicago. Yes, and I will be at the opening. Um, and, so I will and I will too. Oh, great. So come on out and say hello if you get a chance. Okay, great. So thank you, Teresa, so much for checking in with me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun. <laughs>